This video is continuing right where the previous video left off. We're still in part 110, chap 12, then 11. All the code that I'm going to show you is going to work exactly in Octave as it works here in MATLAB, with the possible exception of the array editor. I haven't actually checked that, so I do apologize, but this is a very minor aside, and all the code is going to work. This is an interface thing right here. So let's get to this array editor example. I'm just creating uh, a matrix right here, a little two by three. And I'm going to show you that I can double click on it in the workspace and open up this array editor. It's very much like an Excel spreadsheet and I can change the values, right? Uh, so here, here, let me just go into the command window and type out C, there's my matrix. And I can change this number to a different number and hit enter. And now when I display out C, it is a different value. In fact, it changed the spacing and messed that up. Let me make it a smaller number and show you that that still works. All right, there we go. So that's right there. And you can basically do this with any vector, any matrix at any point in time. You just double click on the workspace and it opens up this sort of Excel spreadsheet looking thing. And you can even enter in new rows and columns if you like, and it'll fill in any blanks with zeros. And, oh, I meant to do a negative four. I accidentally hit the equal sign there. All right, and then we can, uh, let's clear it and then run it again. And there is our new matrix right there. And again, I don't know if that exact feature that like double clicking in the workspace works in Octave, but you can try it out very easily. Now, the main part of this video is that I want to demonstrate how to write code to translate from binary to decimal. Now, this exists already in MATLAB. We don't need to write our own function to do it, but I think it's a good review of functions and a few other little MATLAB tidbits as uh, you're going into the final exam if you're one of my students, or as we're just getting to the end of this video sequence if you're just watching along on YouTube. So let me run this code right here. This is going to show the MATLAB version. And unfortunately, when I say type bin to deck, it won't actually show me the code because bin to deck is a built in function, which I believe means it's like already pre compiled. It's not like written in MATLAB because like sphere is also a built in MATLAB function, but it'll show me its code if I say type sphere. So uh, that's what's happening there. But nonetheless, I can use that function, for example, to translate binary to decimal or decimal to binary, or rather a different function, this function deck to bin will translate from decimal to binary. So I take the 13, display it out as binary. There it is right there, 1101. And then I might as well take that and plug it into the bin to deck function just to show that that also works. Right, and so there's the 13 again, right? So I started with 13, translate it to binary, there's the binary, translate it on back, there's the 13. But let's actually see my code. Okay, so here's my code. My bin to deck takes 1101 as a string, as a character vector is what I should say, and it should give me 13, and there it does. But the real interesting part here is the code. Let's check out the code. And there will be a link to this code in the video description as well. And this part does work in Octave, in case that wasn't clear. All right, so this function has one returned value, which I named decimal number. It has one input, which I named bin char, because it's going to be a vector of characters representing binary. I'm going to start off my decimal number at zero. I'm going to keep track of the current power that I want to raise two to, right? So with the decimal number system, our first digit is the ones digit. Our second digit is the tens digit. Third digit is the hundreds digit. And we can think of that as the ones, 10 to the zero is one, tens, 10 to the one is 10, hundreds, 10 to the two is 100, thousands, 10 to the three, the exponent, the power goes up by one each time. And it's the same with binary, except the binary uses powers of two rather than powers of 10. Now I am gonna loop through in reverse order, which is a little bit weird, but I need to do that because the small digits are on the right side and the large digits are on the left side. I just create a variable that's the length of my input. I loop in my for loop from the length, counting down by one, down to one. And then if the binary character at position K is equal to the symbol one, the character one, well, then I add to my decimal number two raised to the current power. And then regardless of whether or not the character was a one or a zero, I increase the power by one. And that's it. And then here's just another test of my version of the binary to decimal converter right here. So this number right here, mine converts it to 45. 
And that should be correct, because it's 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 32. 1, right here, plus no 2s, plus 4, plus 8, plus no 16s, plus 32. I did not write a decimal to binary converter, but one could, and I encourage you to maybe look up that algorithm online and try and write that in MATLAB. I bet you can do it, and you can compare it to the built-in function. And that's all for this video, and that's all for part 110, chapter 12, then 11.